Hello, and welcome to this webcast titled Cloud Security and Governance Best Practices, brought to you by Layer 7 and InfoWorld. I'm your host today, Vanessa Boris. The focus of our program today is a more detailed technical discussion for architecting your cloud environment. This program is the third and final installment of our three-part series with these presenters. And the first discussed the need for cloud security and governance. The second spoke to the business value and ROI for cloud security. And today we focus on actually delivering that security and governance from an architect's point of view. For example, how do you position cloud services in a way that doesn't cause security breaches? I mean, after all, cloud services may need to access on-premises data. In architecting your solution, you'll need to think about firewalls, access controls, audit controls, and much more, of course. Our program today features actual customer use cases to help you really understand how some enterprises have successfully architected their environments. Joining us for today's discussion are Dave Linthicum, who is the cloud blogger at InfoWorld.com and author of Cloud Computing and also a Convergence in Your Enterprise, an internationally known cloud computing and service-oriented architecture expert. And Scott Morrison, who is the Vice President of Engineering and Chief Architect at Layer 7 Technologies, where he's leading the team to develop the next generation of security infrastructure for web services. Scott is an architect and developer of highly scalable enterprise systems and has been so for over 15 years. He has extensive experience across industry sectors such as health, travel, transportation, and financial services. So stay tuned for what we know will be a terrific program, and you'll learn a lot more about cloud security and governance. A few quick notes before we jump in. In order to take advantage of all of the interactive features of today's webcast, including some audience polls, make sure to disable pop-up blockers if you haven't already. And we want to welcome you to send us your questions at any point during the webcast. Just type them into the box and hit the Submit Question button. And so, uh, it's my great pleasure to turn the program over to David. Dave? Well, thank you very much. I just want to welcome everybody to the webcast and really kind of point out the importance of this topic. As we're moving into cloud computing, in other words, we're, lo we're looking at outsourcing some of our IT resources, such as storage and application servers and middleware and those sorts of things, out to cloud platforms such as Amazon, uh, 3Terra, GoGrid, those sorts of things, the ability to do that securely and in a governed and managed way is really a critical success factor. In fact, the key pushback that I get as people move toward cloud computing is that around security and governance concerns. So this webinar should eliminate a lot of those uh, those concerns ultimately as we move into cloud computing, addressing the need for security and addressing the needs of governance. So moving forward, policies in the context of service-oriented architecture and thus cloud computing are something you need to focus on. At the end of the day, when we leverage cloud computing from our existing enterprises, we're in essence extending our service-oriented architectures outside of the platform of the cloud. So in the book I wrote, I talk about taking your existing enterprise architecture and decomposing it down to a functional primitive of information, services, and processes, and rebuilding it up and looking at the cloud option. In other words, looking at increasing efficiencies and effectiveness of your existing infrastructure by leveraging assets that you don't own or host, and therefore through economies of scale. And everything we covered in the previous webinars are there. We are able to leverage these assets at a much more reduced cost, CapEx versus OpEx cost, we are able to become more agile because we can scale these things up and scale these things down as we need them. We can also change the cloud resources as we need them to adjust to the needs of the business. So that's going to be a core need and a core understanding. And your ability to understand that and how that architecture works is really kind of critical to how you get this stuff working and playing well within your environment. So policies in the context of SOA and thus cloud computing are really who can access the service, you know, where they uh, – uh, what, what they can do with the service, how they can change the service, everything you read there. Ultimately, you have to figure out how governance works with security. You have to figure out how government links with service testing, governance links with service discovery, governance links with service delivery. 
all of these things are lists of things that you need to consider as you look at governance in the context of cloud computing. One of the things I think people have a tendency to do in the terms of government governance in terms of a best practice is they have a tendency to kind of look at it look at it as something that really can't be extended to the cloud. In other words, since the cloud uh, computing assets are assets we don't own, therefore it's going to be very difficult for us to leverage those assets in the context of our architecture and control those assets. Nothing could be further from the truth. In fact, the matter is that in many instances, cloud asset, assets are typically more easy to control, and putting policies around them, such as doing what we're looking to do here, as you see on the slide, is going to be a prerequisite for success, and they know that the ability to support governance is going to drive this going forward. So they're going to open up their APIs and open up their interfaces to allow for governance, uh, governance assets to come in there. In addition, typically within the political infrastructures within lots of the organizations I deal with, you don't have to play the ownership games with people who own other IT assets that you need to incorporate into your enterprise architecture. So since you're paying somebody and you're their customer, you have typically a greater degree of control over them than you would in even some other divisions of the company. So consider that as you move into governance. Consider that policy management, the ability to create policies and what policies are able to do ultimately should extend to your, your uh, cloud computing infrastructure. So in looking at this diagram here, governance spans from on-premise to cloud computing just kind of depicts what I just mentioned. So going forward, we're looking to take cloud computing basically and put the same kind of a policy management and security infrastructure around it as you do with our on-premise systems. The beauty of that is you can use the same infrastructure. You can use Layer 7. You can use govern run, run, their runtime governance technology and security technology basically as an on-premise solution that's able to control these assets and govern these assets and secure these assets on your behalf. So as I mentioned in the first slide, the reason a lot of people avoid using cloud computing is lack of control and lack of security. And in essence, you're able to get around that issue by leveraging a very well thought out um, best practices in security and governance and then selecting the right technology for the job. Now, one of the core things you need to consider here and as you look at this stuff here is that all of these services that participate in the architecture should exist and work and play well with all the other services, whether they're on-premise or cloud-hosted. So we're getting to a point where the lines are blurring between uh, what are IT assets that are under our control within our data center and what are IT assets that are outside of our control or perhaps in our control via governance systems that happen to reside in the cloud, such as Amazon and the other cloud computing providers that are out there, Salesforce.com, what have you. And at the end of the day, it should be completely, as NIST points out, completely, uh, it, it, completely uh, uh, transparent to you. So whether you use assets that exist inside the firewall or outside the firewall, it shouldn't matter ultimately to the end game of building your architecture. And that's a core requirement of doing this kind of architecture because if you do start separating them and put them, put them in their own little buckets and their own little span of control, even have different people looking after them, they have a tendency – to go off in different directions, and they won't add as much value to your initial infrastructure. If you're concerned about governance and security, that's why you plan for that. That's why you create a strategy. That's why you look at best practices, and that's why you leverage technology such as Layer 7 to control, to secure, and to govern those assets on the behalf of the architecture, on the behalf of, the, uh, behalf of IT. So how does governance in the cloud work? Well, there are a number of services as well as the complexities around using those services within the context of cloud computing make service governance, as I mentioned earlier, even more compelling. You have to figure out where the location of those services are, and you have to figure out what those services are going to do as they change over time. One of the things that you put governance layers on top of services is ultimately we want to make sure that those services don't do something that's either going to violate privacy, security, compliance, or even our own uh, policies and procedures that we've innate within these policies that exist within our enterprise. So you need to figure out where they are. You need to figure out who has access to them. You need to figure out who's doing something to them, and you need to figure out how that relies into the security and the governance rules and regulations that you set up within the core infrastructure. So service dependencies, in other words, if you – you know, Amazon changes the service or you change an on-premise service, it could break lots of different things. You need to figure out how those service dependencies are going to work and how that propagates out to the other services or applications that leverage those services. How it works in terms of security, in other words, your ability to make sure that people aren't able to do malicious or, or, or uh, bad things to your existing system uh, by violating security policies at the service level. 
And then service monitoring, they only do the auditing and logging and those sorts of things to make sure that you figure out what those services are doing. So if you do indeed have issues, you have a log of things you're able to go through to, make, to see exactly what happened. The other thing around that is compliance auditing. In many instances, uh, regulations, not only United States regulations, but regulations that are overseas as well around privacy require you to do logging and core governance systems in order to be legal, in order to live up to the uh, capabilities of the law. And so you got to look at location, look at dependencies, look at monitoring, and look at security. So security and governance, you know, there are a couple of things to consider here, you know, in terms of security on the, in the context of government. Excuse me, governance. First and foremost, you need to leverage good enough security, meaning the security solution you look at to implement is proper for the application and information you're protecting. One of the things I see people do is they, they err on uh, both sides. In other words, there's no security there because they consider cloud computing as something that can't be secure, and therefore they don't take steps in doing the planning and putting in the governance infrastructure and the security infrastructure in place to support it. In other instances, they over-secure it. So in other words, they, they may not even leverage cloud computing assets. They may lock it up behind their, uh, behind their firewall. They may do things where it's not accessible by the systems that need to access it. And that's also a mistake because ultimately if the services aren't available to people who need to consume them, then they don't, they don't have the value and therefore the value of leveraging cloud computing or service-oriented architecture or any kind of service-based computing for that matter is going to be diminished. Second, you need to create a security approach using use cases and, you know, that, uh, using use cases and thus look at how security needs to exist at every level of the system. So you need to figure out exactly and partition your system into various different security domains and figure out how security is applicable in those particular domains. So in essence, you look at your requirements, what you need to leverage in terms of security and governance, and you back the appropriate security solutions uh, into those particular domains. And that, I think, is the best practice. Scott, you're going to cover some of this stuff later in your presentation. Is there anything to add here, some guidance you can give the audience around security and governance? Well, I think you hit the nail on the head, actually, particularly with the second one, which is you really have to have a good knowledge of use cases and build your security around that. Uh, we can avoid extremes. You don't have to do no security, and you don't have to you know, do extreme security where everything's completely locked down and nothing works. You can tune security so that it actually works for you. It gives you the right level of confidence, the ability to manage trust effectively out there in the cloud, but also is, is tuned specifically to your needs. And, and to do that effectively, you need to think about the real use cases and not the theoretical ones. And that, in fact, is actually exactly what we're going to talk about in the second half of this, um, uh, this presentation. We actually dig down and look at some real use cases and some real technology and how it can help you get that level of confidence in moving out to the cloud. Thank you very much, Scott. That's a great response. So moving on, we have to look at governance technology. And it's a, a bit disconcerting to me as I'm out there doing consulting and speaking to people about cloud computing and how it works and plays with your enterprise in that people don't understand the utilization of governance technology in the context of cloud computing. And that's pretty much because cloud computing is a tendency to be a new kind of a path or an approach. It's been around for a long period of time, but people are really interested in, right, interested in cloud computing right now and therefore uh, don't have a tendency to dig deep into the architectural realities of it and don't have a tendency to look at the uh, opportunities for leveraging technology to make cloud computing much more workable, much more secure. So runtime service governance is typically the kinds of technology you want to leverage for cloud computing, the ability to put policies around your existing services out there, secure those services, and monitor those services in a runtime state. 